Hello there. In this video I'll be showing you how to choose cars and upgrades in the GTA class series of the Project Cars 3 career mode. There are 26 cars in the GTA showroom, and 36 more from the previous classes. That's 62 cars in total. I tested all 62 cars in both pace setters of the GTA Major series to find out how they'd perform. The River Rapid Pace Setter at Monument Canyon River Run is on a fictional track. The River Run layout consists of middle to high speed corners and a short straight, with rapid elevation changes. The key to achieving the highest goal, 54 seconds of average lap time, is car traction. Both mechanical grip and aerodynamics are essential. Cars have to pass through corner number 4 with full throttle and the most grippy cars can even go through corner number one without lifting the gas pedal. The trickiest part of this track is the chicane at corner number five. The race line exiting the previous corner is crucial. The car would bounce off the ground when entering the corner and make it very difficult to slow down, if it's in the wrong line going through corner number four. The car needs to brake very hard to slow down to under 60 miles per hour or 100 km per hour speed and pass through the chicane smoothly. Any mistake would cost the driver up to a whole second. It takes a lot of practice to do it correctly. The final turn before the finish line is another critical corner. The car needs to carry enough exiting speed to accelerate through the following straight otherwise the next lap would be slower. The Hot Tires Pace Setter at Dubai Autodrome GP is on a real-world track. This is the same circuit as the Emirates Showdown Pace Setter of the Road C Major Series. It comes with many tight corners, mid to high speed curves, and two very long straights. To achieve the average lap time below 1 minute 55 seconds, cars require very good traction. Many of the cars in my test can go through corner number 2 with full throttle, some cars have done it easily, and some need a perfect race line to do it. For the long straight between corner number 5 and number 6, many cars performed better by moving some PIR points to upgrade the engine. The corner number 6 requires a hard braking after the long straight, the correct braking point is crucial. The tricky part here is not to slow down too much, or we could lose a lot of time in this hard turn. The last turn, corner number 11 is very important to keep the next lap time fast. The entry and exiting speed is the key to success. To do it correctly, we need to start our approach at the corner number 9. Fine-tune the line going through these three corners and push the car to its limit. I prefer to stay on the left edge when exiting corner number 9, so I can maximize the speed to go through the next corner and carry that speed to the break point of the last turn. The highest objectives of these two pace setters are not easily achieved if you do not know what upgrades the selected car needs. There are 43 cars reached both goals in my test, tried many different upgrades on each of them. The PIR limit for the GTA class is R749. Most of the GT3 cars from the GTA class showroom are tough choices. They come with very little PIR margin for upgrades and it is very difficult to challenge the highest goals with them. The low-end cars from previous classes are totally different. They have plenty of PIR margin to get improved and I found them much easier to achieve the highest objectives with. SMS simplified the tire physics in PC3. The tire temperature does not change at all. The funny thing is that the brakes on the low-end cars overheated very easily, but it doesn't affect the performance. You can see that the rear brakes of this car are always glowing, the temperature is so hot that the brakes and tires should have been long gone, but the car is still running well. That's a huge advantage for the low-end cars. 
There are few cars which don't have any front lights, or the front lights don't work at all. Although the Ford Fiesta and Fusion stock car made it to get into my list, but it's very difficult to drive them at Dubai GP in the dark. In the beginning of the GTA class, the GTA Basics series, all 62 cars are allowed. In the second tier, the American made series, only cars from the US are allowed. There are 6 American cars in the GTA showroom, and 4 more from previous classes. There is a challenge in the El Dorado State Race, to reach the top speed of 170 miles per hour, or 273 kilometers per hour. I only found one car to do it, the Ford Fusion stock car. In the third tier, the GTA Specials, each stage has different requirements. Raging Bull Breakout specifies Lamborghini Huracan GT3. The piece of history race requires cars from Ferrari and there are only three cars available. The third objective of this race is to reach 185 miles per hour or 297 kilometers per hour. The only car can go that fast is the 488 challenge. The home turf race requires cars from Germany. There are 13 cars available in total. Six from the GTA showroom and seven other cars from previous classes. The Italian Job Racing Championship requires cars from Italy. There are five cars available. Four from the GTA showroom and the Ferrari F40. And all 62 cars are allowed for the GTA Major Series. We need at least four cars to complete the entire GTA Series. The Lamborghini Huracan GT3 is specified for Raging Bull Breakout, and it's also allowed for the Italian Job Race. We need Ford Fusion Stock Car for El Dorado Race of the American Made Series, and Ferrari 488 Challenge for the Piece of History Race. We still need one German car for the Home Turf Race. You can easily pick one from the list of my test results later. All 62 cars are tested with the front downforce set at 4, and the rear downforce set at 10, for both pace setters. I adjusted the brake balance of many cars to fit my taste, tuned the ride height of some high-end cars down one or two clicks, and the anti-roll bars of the Ferrari 488 GT3, to beat the highest goals. The upgrades selected with each car in this video are the fastest configurations found in my test. Some of them are quite difficult to handle, but they yielded faster results. These cars would be much easier to drive if we sacrifice a little speed and move those PIR points to improve handling. For there are 43 cars that reached the highest objectives of both pace setters, I'll be showing you most of them very briefly. Number 43, Porsche 911 GT3R Number 42, BMW M6 GT3 Number 41, Mercedes AMG C63 Coupe Racing Number 40, McLaren 720S GT3 Number 39, Aston Martin DB11 Racing Number 38, Bentley Continental GT3 Number 37, Cadillac ATS VR GT3 Number 36, Nissan GT-R Nismo GT3 R35 Number 35, Ferrari 488 GT3 is a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive car from the GTA showroom, upgraded to PIRR 747 at River Run. I lowered the ride height to 72 and 79 mm, and tuned the anti-roll bars to 60 and 25 Newton per mm. This GT3 car comes with superb suspension and aerodynamics. The problem is that there is not much PIR margin to improve the engine, it's very difficult to reach the highest goal with this car. I got similar results either with upgrading weight reduction or the turbocharger. It's really challenging to get a 3 lap average lap time under 54 seconds. Upgraded to PIRR 749 at Dubai GP by moving PIR points from weight reduction to turbocharger and tuned anti-roll bars to 110 and 25 Newton per millimeter. It is very difficult for this car to reach the highest goal at Dubai GP as well. There is absolutely no margin for error, 
and the car got to be pushed hard enough in every corner. It takes a lot of practice to make it happen. I'd recommend this car to everyone who likes to improve their skills. It is a must try it if you want to be fast. Number 34, Porsche Cayman GT4 Club Sport MR. Number 33, Acura NSX GT3. Number 32, McLaren 570S GT4. Number 31, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 GT4R. Number 30, Ford Mustang 2 Plus 2 Fastback Racing. Number 29, Flamborghini Sesto Elemento. Number 28, Alpine A110 GT4. Number 27, Ford Mustang GT Racing. Number 26, Lamborghini Huracan GT3. Number 25, Nissan Z Proto SMSR Racing. Number 24, Mazda RX-7 Racing. Number 23, Nissan 370Z Racing. Number 22, Dodge Challenger Hellcat Racing. Number 21, Acura NSX 97 Racing. Number 20, Toyota GT86 Racing. Number 19, BMW 320TCE90. Number 18, Janetta G55 GT3. Number 17, Audi R8 LMS. Number 16, Nissan Silvia S15 Racing. Number 15, Nissan Skyline GTR R34 Racing. Number 14, BMW Z4 GT3 is the fastest car from the GTA showroom. Number 13, Ford Fusion Stock Car. Number 12, Lotus Exige Cup 430 Racing is the fastest car in my GTB class video. It needs stage 2 aero package and soft race tires to reach both highest objectives, so the acceleration is sacrificed. Even with the soft race tires the mechanical grip is still low, and it's quite difficult to push this car to the limit consistently. Number 11, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 Racing. Number 10, Opel Astra TCR. Number 9, KTM XBOW GT4 Number 8, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 Racing Number 7, Ford Fiesta OMSE Supercar Lights Number 6, Renault Megan RS TCR Number 5, Renault Megan Trophy V6, is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car from the GTB class, upgraded to PIRR 742 for river run with soft race tires, stage 2 aero package, stage 3 intake, and RPM limit increase. The mechanical grip and the aerodynamics are both very good. It's very easy to control, and it makes the highest goal feel so easy. At Dubai GP, it's also very easy to reach the highest goal with the same configuration, but it performed better with medium race tires, stage 1 aero package, and stage 1 turbocharger. That's PIRR 749. With more power but less grip, it's a little more difficult to handle at high speed. It got 52.574 seconds average lap time at River Run. and 1 minute 51 seconds.431 at Dubai GP. That's 4.995 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. Number 4, Honda Civic Type R Racing, is a front engine, front wheel drive car from the GTC class, upgraded to PIRR 749 at River Run with soft race tires, stage 1 weight reduction, stage 3 aero package, 
stage 1 camshaft, stage 2 ECU, stage 2 engine block, and stage 3 turbocharger. It's agile, well balanced, very easy to control. With the soft tires and the top tier bodywork upgraded, the mechanical grip and aerodynamics are both superb. It's very easy to reach the highest goal. With the same configuration at Dubai GP, it performed very well too. It's also very easy to reach the highest objective, but it performed even better by downgrading the bodywork to stage 2 aero package, and move the PIR points to upgrade the engine with stage 3 intake, stage 3 camshaft, stage 3 ECU, and stage 3 engine block. Everything regarding the engine except for the boost is fully upgraded. The car is still easy to drive, and it's very easy to reach the highest goal too. It got 51.883 seconds average lap time at River Run, and 1 minute 52 seconds.097 at Dubai GP. That's 5.020 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. Number 3, Mercedes AMG A45 Touring, is a front engine, front wheel drive car from the GTC class, and it's from Germany, a good choice for the home turf race of GTA Special Series. It's upgraded to PIRR 748 at River Run with soft race tire, stage 1 weight reduction, stage 3 aero package, Stage 1 camshaft, Stage 2 ECU, Stage 2 engine block, and Stage 3 turbocharger. This car is agile, well balanced, very easy to control. Both the mechanical grip and the aerodynamics are superb. It's a piece of cake to reach the highest goal at River Run with this car. It's also quite easy to reach the highest goal at Dubai GP but it performed much faster by downgrading the bodywork to stage 2 aero package and move the PIR points to upgrade air intake, camshaft, fuel injection, and engine block, all up to the top tier. The grip is lowered, but it's still easy to handle. It's very easy to reach the highest objective with this car. It got 51.8 seconds average lap time at River Run and 1 minute 52 seconds.077 at Dubai GP. That's 5.123 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. Number 2, Audi TDS Coupe Racing, is a front engine, front wheel drive car from the GTC class and it's the fastest car from Germany. It's upgraded to PIRR 749 at River Run with soft race tires, Stage 1 weight reduction, Stage 3 aero package, Stage 2 camshaft, Stage 3 ECU, Stage 3 engine block, and Stage 3 turbocharger. It's very agile, very easy to control, reacts to input precisely, very responsive. The mechanical grip and the aerodynamics are superb. It can go through the first corner with full throttle if the line is perfect. It's the fastest car at River Run in my test. It's also very easy to reach the highest goal at Dubai GP, but it performed even better by downgrading the bodywork to stage 2 aero package, and move the PIR points to fully upgrade the engine. It's still very easy to handle, and very easy to reach the highest goal with. It got 51.515 seconds average lap time at River Run and 1 minutes 52 seconds.143 at Dubai GP. That's 5.342 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. Number 1, Genetta G55 GT4, is a front engine, rear wheel drive car from the GTB class upgraded to PIRR 746 at River Run with soft race tires, Stage 2 aero package, and Stage 1 turbocharger. It's very agile, rotates very easily when turning into corners, and it's well balanced, very easy to control. Both the mechanical grip and aerodynamics are excellent. 
It probably is the easiest car to beat the highest goal at River Run. It's recommended for novice drivers to start with. It's also very easy to reach the highest goal at Dubai GP, but it performed much better by downgrading bodywork to stage 1 aero package, and moved the PIR points to upgrade force induction to stage 2 turbocharger. Both the top speed and acceleration got improved, the car is faster, but it's still easy to handle. This adjustment yielded almost 2 seconds faster lap time. It's the fastest car at Dubai GP in my test. It got 52.522 seconds average lap time at River Run. And 1 minute 50 seconds.903 at Dubai GP. That's 5.575 seconds ahead of the highest objectives in total. The Genetta G55 GT4 is the fastest car in the GTA class. With excellent handling and acceleration, it makes the highest goals very easy to reach. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.